Hi. Uh, I wanted to close chapter one, the lecture, with um, the way the book ends, which is the discussion on ethics. And essentially there are two ethical extremes. Uh, fundamentalism, sometimes called absolute, um, absolutism, and relativism. Uh, relativism is this notion that right and wrong are all determined within the context of each particular culture, so there aren't any universal precepts to apply. It all varies from place to place. Um, absolutism, or as your book calls it, fundamentalism, deals with the, the idea that there are absolute precepts, uh, universal laws, if you will, that are always right and always wrong, regardless of circumstance. Um, sometimes people view the notion of human rights, the protection of human rights, as to be a part of this code. So those are the ethical considerations. I'd ask you to think about which one of those extremes are you more comfortable with? Which one fits you? Do you tend to be a little bit of a relativist? Do you tend to be a little bit of an absolutist? And um, can you see the problems inherent with either extreme? Uh, your book discusses different aspects within ethical communication and gives you, gives you some suggestions in order to be a more ethical uh, intercultural communicator. And those are pretty clear in the book, so I won't repeat those, but there are five of them and they're great. I do want to add one um, addition to the textbook. This is some really interesting uh, writings by a guy named Bradford Hall who deals with intercultural ethics and he argues that there are what he calls five, five goldens, five goldens as an approach to ethics. And these are the standards by which people have made ethical judgments throughout history. The first golden is called the golden purse i.e. he with the most riches gets his way. Uh, he who has the, the most gold rules. And certainly historically you can look back through the centuries and see that that's the way much of the world operate. And that's what determined what was right and what was wrong was who had the power. Um, power comes in a lot of different forms, not just monetary, uh, but the golden purse has to do with the power element. Uh, the golden mean the golden mean, mean is the idea mean mathematically in terms of average that justice is always found in the middle. Uh, that if you want it hot and I want it cold, then what we need to do is have it lukewarm. And so justice is always found in the middle, that you avoid extremes, you avoid either or, all or nothing, um, that there's always a middle ground. The third one is called the golden law. And the golden law is the idea of universal ethics, that there is a universal right and wrong, and what is right for one person must therefore be right for the other. It's an all-inclusive approach regardless of um, cultural context. It is essentially um, absolutism. Um, the golden consequence, and this basically determines right or wrong by outcome. Well, if we do this, uh, he's going to end up with a severe knock on the head. If we do that, she may end up dead. So therefore, the right thing to do is the first. And so it's the idea of outcome determining. It's very hard to live this way because many times um, determining the outcome is mere speculation. It's a mere guess. But the most um, well-known, most common one is what we commonly call the golden rule. And the golden rule is basically thou shall not do unto others what you would not have do unto yourself. Um, traditionally this is viewed as a Christian rule and yet um, there's a lot of research that argues that this particular philosophy is found in many religions across the world and um, basically that you know you treat others the way that you would want to be treated. So um, with that I'm going to close this out and uh, you've survived chapter one and so did I. So new book, new changes, it's been interesting. So have a terrific uh, week wherever you are and I'll see you online.